Cursor just announced their 1.0 release and in it, they have quite a few features that are super interesting and some that we're gonna take a look at. One of them being Bugbot and their one-click MCP install capabilities. So without further ado, let's jump right into checking it out. Here's their release documentation. I'll have a link in the description for you to check out yourself. One of the reasons why this bug bot feature is of interest to me is we're seeing this trend now with AI providers and tools where they're tying into your pipeline, your build software development life cycle, basically, and your build pipeline, where they can automatically check things for you, add features, run things in the background. That sort of thing is becoming more and more popular and available, readily available as a feature from the various AI tooling providers that are out there. So with that, Cursor is essentially building that in as part of their overall offerings outside of Cursor, the editor, but now in your source control management system, your build pipeline, particularly in GitHub right now, but I imagine that might expand to other source control management systems too. But in particular, the things announced in here that are of most interest to me is the automatic code review with Bugbot. And then obviously background agent for everyone is pretty cool, but I'm not gonna cover that in this video. The other thing I wanna cover here is MCP one-click install and OAuth support. This announcement is of interest to me as well because of the fact that it seems to simplify setting up MCP servers for you. So let's take a look at these features in the new version 1.0 release of Cursor and see how they go. The first one we're gonna take a look at is Bugbot. Now, one thing to take note of with this one is that it comes with a seven day free trial, which starts as soon as you set it up. So I started setting it up today. I have seven days of a free trial with that. And after that, I'm gonna start being charged to use it. How do they calculate charging that for you? Well, that is determined and outlined down here in the pricing section on their documentation. Under the hood, Bugbot is using the same AI that powers Cursor and uses the same pricing model as Max Mode. So if you're familiar with that, you understand how the pricing and, and the cost is gonna be of using Bugbot after the seven day free trial. So just a heads up on all that. So first things first is getting set up and configuring this Bugbot capabilities with Cursor. You sign into your account at cursor.com and go to cursor.com slash settings as they call out here. And then you head over to the integrations tab. You'll be presented with this view and you can click on connect GitHub account. If you're not already signed into GitHub, you'll be prompted to sign into GitHub. You click on that, it'll bring you here and say, where do you want to install cursor? Assuming you're part of multiple organizations on GitHub. In this case, I want it under my own. And then I'm going to be specific about which repository I want to let it have access to. It is the AI code security repository. In this case, it's going to have permissions to read, to access actions, checks, commit statuses, that sort of thing, but then also read and write access to code, discussions, issues, pull requests, and workflows. So just keep that in mind in case you have any concerns with those types of permissions. You may not want to go forward with it, but I'm gonna go ahead and do that, install and authorize, and then it is all set to go. And now I could start using it on that repository I gave it permission to. All right, one very important note is that after you configure the integration with GitHub for Bugbot, you come back over to cursor.com slash settings and you go to the Bugbot option here. One, set a spend limit so that after you reach the end of the free trial, you don't go spending more than you want to on Bugbot in your applications. And then two, for whatever repository you added or enabled Bugbot to have access to, you have to turn it on. It doesn't seem to be on by default whenever I added in that integration. I had to come back over here to turn it on first. And then you have some other options that you can choose too under your personal preferences. Only run when mentioned. Uh, actually, I'm gonna turn that off uh, because I want it to run on open PRs and when I mention it, right? But if you wanted to, you can make it where you manually only trigger it and that'll help with your spend limitations on Bugbot as well. You could also choose to only run it once per pull request and ignore any new commits. And then you can have it hide no bugs and comments there. So key thing, turn this on, then head over to your pull request to manually trigger it or open up a new pull request to trigger Bugbot. All right, in a past video, we tried out Google Jules, which takes a task, runs it off in their own VM, making code changes, and then opens up a PR against the repository that those changes are prompted for. What I wanna do here is now take this exact PR and run Bugbot against it to see what kind of output and results it gives us, if it's anything similar to what Jules says about it, or maybe some new stuff comes up. Now, in order for us to be able to do that against the PR, we need to understand how Bugbot works. 
So looking at their documentation, there's a couple of ways that you can activate or leverage BugBot's capabilities via automatic comments. So every time a PR is updated, BugBot will rerun and leave comments based on that with potential issues that it finds. You can manually trigger it with a comment that says BugBot run, or you can use their fix in cursor links that come up in the comments from BugBot. So we're gonna go with this BugBot run capability is right above my head here and try and trigger it that way and see how it goes against that PR. All right, so I'm gonna type in bug bot run and then send in that comment and then see if it does indeed respond to that. It reacted with a eyes emoji. So does that mean it's running? Is it doing something somewhere? We got a reaction out of it, you see that. I don't see any comments or anything. So maybe it's taking some time to run in the background and then it'll comment anything that it finds after that come back once I see any results. All right, we're back. So two, it took about two minutes for it to run. So basically what happens is it reacts with the eyeball emoji to like acknowledge that it got the comment, but it doesn't give you any kind of progress report or anything to indicate that something's happening. But a few minutes later, two minutes in this case, it removed that emoji and then responded back with this comment. So it found JWT signing errors crash application it found a database clearing fails due to premature promise resolution, unhandled JWT signing error, and then it gives you an idea of how much your, your, your usage is for BugBot. So it found three issues, Let's well, three bugs, I guess. So let's look into those a little bit further. So in both the register and login functions, so in this case, it's reviewing code that Google Jewels created and wrote for us. That's part of this PR here. Register and login functions, the throw error within the JWT sign callback is not caught by the surrounding try catch block. Oh, okay. Well, that's a good, good catch by that. This result is an unhandled exception and application crash if the JWT signing fails instead of returning an error response to the client. That's helpful. I like that. That's a, that's a good legitimate bug that it caught there. And then we can click on fixing cursor if we wanted to, but we're going to pause before we do that. Let's see some of these other bugs that we have here. All right. Database clear. I like that it's including the code snippets too, of like, what's the problem, right? So that you have some of that context. So we have a race condition in clear tables. The resolve call executes immediately, which is right here before the asynchronous DB run operations complete. This causes the promise to resolve prematurely, potentially leading to tests running with incomplete cleared database data. So this is good. It's catching in the test because you might be getting false passes or false positive end results in your unit test that you might have written um, because it's not truly removing the, the dummy data that you might be using in your test cases. So that's cool. Another interesting one, not really relevant to a production like kind of bug like this first one, but still very important. And then the last one is that unhandled JWT signing error. So the throw error statement inside the asynchronous chain. So basically just like the first one, we have a throw error that's not actually caught in a try catch. And this is more of a production kind of bug that can potentially come up if there's an issue when the JWT sign function happens here. So really interesting, really relevant results coming from cursors bug bot that's available up on GitHub in these pull requests like this. All right, so we're gonna take a look at fixing the first bug that it reported in cursor. I'm gonna click on fix in cursor. It prompts me to open up cursor, incorrect branch, but your current workspace is on an unknown branch. All right, so I ran into an error there where it found some issue with the fact that I wasn't on the correct branch for that repository that I already had cloned locally for this pull request. So what I did is I manually switched to that branch for this pull request to see if this maybe improves the flow more seamlessly. So I'm gonna click on fix cursor again. It's going to prompt me to open cursor. Okay. And now it is indeed ready to go. So what that did was it opened up cursor to the actual file that the bug was found in and highlighted the lines of code and then added this new chat using agent mode and then Gemini 2.5 pro from March of this year. So that's interesting that it chose those. I don't know if that's what I had selected prior to this, but um, I wonder if it's choosing that on purpose or not. In any case, it added to the prompt highlighting those files and the lines saying, fix this bug in both the register and basically re reiterated the bug message that we got in the PR. So I'm going to send that in and see what cursor does from here. Okay. So after a few, maybe a minute or so, 
Uh, it finished thinking through everything and it says that it can fix the bug. The callback is indeed not being caught by the surrounding try catch block, which can lead to unhandled exceptions. They modified the register and login functions in auth controller here. They're gonna handle it by logging the error message and sending a server error response in, instead. This will prevent the application from crashing and provide a graceful error response to the client. Okay, so looking at the diff here, instead of if error throw error, it's now if error console.error and then res.status500 send. So that's nice that it's not revealing any sensitive information, right? It's just saying server error. It's not going to send more details to the client in this application. So that's good from a security standpoint. And it did that for both locations. So it's fixing two of those bugs in one, even though we only told it about the one bug. So that's nice. They fixed it and we're going to accept that. Now, the next step is I'm going to commit and push these changes to the PR and see if Bugbot gets triggered again automatically and see if it reports any new ones and see if that one is still unresolved from the database not clearing in the tests. We didn't fix that bug just yet. So see if that gets reported still or if any new ones get alerted to us in the PR. All right, I pushed those changes up to the branch in the PR. Let's head on over to GitHub and look at the PR and see if anything happens there. All right, I'm back over in the PR. I see my original comments. I see cursors response and bugs found from that. We can see my commits are there and my checks, security checks that are running with sneak are happening right now, but I don't see anything indicating Bugbot has noticed these new commits that came up in the PR just yet, other than possibly this emoji reaction from Bugbot on the PR description. So I don't know if that was there before. I didn't notice it before. Maybe you did in the recording. Um, I know it reacted to this comment when I ran Bugbot run or I commented Bugbot run, but we're going to give it a few minutes. I'm going to wait and see. Otherwise, I'll manually trigger Bugbot run again and see if we get different results this time. Okay, it took a few minutes, but it did come back with some more results. Bugbot left a comment. We have new issues now. We have middleware duplication and unused security config. Promise premature resolution and clear tables, which is the one that we had before. Yep, that was the same one as before. It seems to always give you three bugs at once. Maybe it doesn't want to overload you with too many bugs or, you know, that type of thing. But I wonder, like, at some point, do we ever get to a point where Bugbot's like, hey, no bugs found. You're good to go. Go ahead and merge this, you know, that type of thing. All right, so cool. It got this CSRF protection happening in multiple instances and that is duplicating things and it typically happens in an app.js file the main instance right instead of reusing an instance so that could potentially be a true issue there i'm not too sure about that but i'm glad it's called out and brought to our attention and going up to the top and looking at this first bug that it reported or first new bug rather it's talking about the cookie parser middleware being initialized twice first without a secret which is what's happening here also something to note that uh i i noticed here is that i Sometimes there is scrollability in this comment here. So if you're like, where's, where's this other code that it's talking about? You just got to scroll down inside this view. So this first instance right here, right? sets it up without it. Parse cookies required for CSERF. And then it has some more configuration based on what CSERF protection setup is being done based on the environment we're running in too. So that's the other aspect of it that I think. So I, I think cursor may or may not, or cursors bug bot rather, may or may not be taking into context this conditional situation, right? Where if the node ENV is set to test, then it turns off the CSRF protection. And then if it's not, uh, if in non-test environments, CSRF secret should be set, right? So it's detecting that too. And then based on this, it sets up the CSRF package in app.js again. So this is not in the specific or where were we down here? not in these specific auth routes and note routes. And depending on what node environment you're running in will determine how the CSRF protection gets implemented via that package. Then that also further complicates how cookie parser gets set up to use the CSRF secret. The original code, if CSRF secret is defined, we should use it for cookie parser. All right, as you can see, Bugbot from Cursor has been pretty helpful in identifying potential issues in the code for a pull request that might be merged into our project. This was AI generated code from another model, another AI code generation tool. It helped ensure we catch these types of issues before they make it into production and maybe cause problems in that environment for our end users and our business. Now I imagine because of the types of changes and how big this PR is, we're gonna keep running into more and more issues like this and 
and have Bugbot keep reporting new ones. It seems to limit itself to three at a time. So while I want to get to a point where Bugbot's like, hey, we're good to go, no issues, and see what that experience is like, I don't think we're gonna find that here in this particular example. So with that said, what's been your experience with Cursor's Bugbot? Have you found it to be helpful? Have you found it catching issues that you didn't catch at first glance? Or have you gotten to the point where Bugbot reported that there were no issues that it found? Let me know in the comments below. Now, I know I mentioned earlier in the video that we're gonna take a look at the other feature that was announced in Cursor 1.0, which was the MCP one-click install. We're gonna save that for another video coming up next. On that note, that does it for this video. If you got value out of it, be sure to like it down below and share it with somebody who can put it to use. And if you made it this far, subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on upcoming videos. Thanks for watching and happy safe coding, everyone.